I'm going to show you how to do these vibrant gouache illustrations that are perfect for practicing with gouache in your sketchbook in a relatively short amount of time. I'm using the Himi gouache palette with 18 colours and my tone paper sketchbook from Strathmore. I'll link the exact supplies below but remember that you don't need these exact same supplies to follow along. The paints you have already can be used and you don't need to achieve the same colours that I'm using. You'll be able to adapt this to the colours that you have. I'll describe the colours as like dark red or light pink or an orangey red so whatever you have that gets close to those descriptions will work for this. So let's start with some chilies, and I love painting these. I'm going to swatch the colours I'll be using. You want an orangey red, an orange, a deeper red and a dark red and I achieved the dark red by mixing some blue into my deep red. Then you also want some light pink for the highlights, two shades of green for the stalk, a lighter green and a darker green, and of course some white for those bright highlights. So I'm starting by covering most of the chilli in a layer of watery gouache and an orangey red, and I'm leaving some space for the highlights. Then I start to build dimension to the middle and the edges of the chilli by adding some red on top, still letting some of that orange poke through underneath. And you don't have to wait for the different layers of paint to fully dry at this stage. It's okay if you move the paint a bit underneath, as long as the page isn't soaking wet, you can actually use the dampness of the layers underneath to help with overall blending. I then go in with a very light pink and I mix the light pink with the white and I start adding where the highlights will go. Then with some orange I go over the areas where I laid that first layer of orange um, just to make them a bit brighter and pop out a bit more. Now to get that 3D effect you need contrast, so I go in with an even darker red and I start adding some of those shadows that will start building out the chilli even more. One of my biggest tips for illustrations that jump off the page is to really amp up the contrast between light and shadow. I don't strive for realism, I really like my illustrations to look painted and have that painterly effect, but at the moment I really do love the jumping off the page effect. So if you want to achieve that as well, remember to create as much contrast as possible between the light and shadow areas. And sometimes I even push the contrast even more than what the reference photo is portraying to really get that effect. Once I'm happy with the shape of the overall shadows and highlights, I go in with the white to add those really bright highlights that will help with amping up the contrast and making the whole thing look really vibrant. And you're just picking out those small areas, don't cover the whole highlight in bright white. Then the stalk is quite simple, I just lay down a light green first covering the whole stalk, then I add a dark green to one side of the stalk for shadow, and then I add a few dots of a lighter green over that for the highlights. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing for this second chilli, and I'll keep this one in without an explanation, but I'll put a timestamp below for the next illustration in case you want to skip to that. Okay, here's the final result and these took about 10 minutes each in total and they're a really great warm-up subject to paint, so if you try them out, let me know how it goes. I've been seeing the echinacea flower everywhere this summer and I did a quick sketch in pencil from a reference photo that I took and you can find my reference photos that you can feel free to use in my highlighted stories on Instagram. 
So the colors you'll need are a light pink, a white, a dark pink, a dark blue, a yellow that's more sunflower rather than lemon, an orange, a light green and a dark green. Okay, so I start by filling in the leaves with this light green shade all over and because I work in layers with gouache, I start with the more watery layers first and then I build on the thicker layers after. Then with the dark green, I'm going in and covering the center of the leaves and this is gonna be the shadows and we're gonna paint over them. They look a bit messy initially, but trust the process. This is gonna help with adding depth and make sure the gouache is still at a thinner consistency because we'll want this to dry completely to begin painting on top of it. And here I'm going in with an even darker shade of green to create even more depth to those shadows. So while that dries, I'm gonna go in with a dark blue and fill in the center of the flowers. I'm then doing the petals of the flowers using a light pink and also mixing a bit of white to get an even lighter pink. And as you can see, I'm being messy with this. I'm not doing perfect petals here. It's about getting the different colors to contrast with each other and create an overall effect. Then I'm going in with a bit of the light pink mixed with the darker pink and adding that to the petals to create that ombre effect that echinacea petals have. I'm adding some bright white to pick out some definition in the petals and basically now I begin going back and forth with adding highlights and shadows to get some depth into these flowers. And that's kind of my painting process in general. I do have some methodical steps I will generally follow, but it also gets to a point where I have to play around and add and modify things as I go along, which is also the beauty of painting because yes, it's great to have steps to follow along in a tutorial, but you also want to have the freedom to experiment and play and figure out as you go and give it your own touch. Here I'm going in with the dark pink to add some more depth and definition to the petals. And with the dark blue I'm doing the same even more sparingly to be able to define the petals even more. And then here I'm going in with a very subtle shade of light pink mixed with a touch of dark blue to get a slightly less saturated colour. And I'm going over some of the petals and this is going to be a good mid-tone and make those white highlights look even brighter. Then I'm adding those spiky orange and yellow details to the centre of the flower, just dabbing my brush with either yellow or orange and then I'll be adding a little bit of white as well into the mix. And then finally I go back to the petals and add those final white highlights that define the petals and bring everything together. Now we have to go back to the leaves and add a second layer of paint. So make sure your gouache is a bit thicker, especially because this is a lighter color over a dark color. I start painting on the leaves, just following the natural shape that the brush makes. And as you can see, it begins to add depth to the leaves and I want the leaves and shadows to be a bit darker. So I go in with a darker blue and start painting those on and this will help add volume to the plant.
Now with a lighter mix of green, so adding some more white into my green, I go over those foreground leaves again, adding detail and picking out highlights. And I keep going in with lighter paint to pick out those highlights. So I was running out of natural light and I didn't realise how dark it looked on screen but here is the final result of the echinacea plant in daylight. Okay let's do the strawberry and I can't seem to stop painting and drawing strawberries so let's do a gouache version. So I start with a simple sketch and I'm going to be using orange, red, an orangey red, a dark red and I just mix in some dark blue for this into my red, a darker yellow, a bright green, a mid green, and then a dark green. And again, you can mix dark blue into your green for this, and then white for the highlights. Okay, so we're starting with the watery consistency gouache in an orangey red all over the strawberry. Then I'm gonna go in with orange around the center part of the strawberry. Then I'm covering the rest of the strawberry in red, leaving the orange area to come through. And because my layers are wet, I can go in with my brush and smooth over where the different colours meet to get them to blend. Make sure your brush isn't super wet when you do this, it needs to be damp so you can control the paint a bit better. And then with a darker red, I'm going to go in to the areas in shadow around the edges of the strawberry and start to also add some of those strawberry dimples. Here I'm just deepening and defining the shadow of where the strawberry meets the surface it's on, as well as adding the shadow inside the dimples of the strawberry. Then I realized I needed a bit more red to come through on the body of the strawberry, so I went in and filled out um, certain parts of the strawberry in more of a red tone. and. I didn't do this perfectly so I could still get some of that orangey red poking through which eventually adds dimension and this is another trust the process moment so it definitely went through a bit of an ugly stage but trust that you're building towards the final version which looks really cute. So while I wait for that to dry I go on to the leaves and I cover the whole area in a light green. And then while I wait for the leaves to dry, I go in with the white and start picking out highlights. So for this, I looked at several strawberry photos, which helped me determine where to roughly place the highlights. But essentially on the side of the strawberry, the white highlight is below the dimple, catching the light from above. It's a small detail, but it helps it look more kind of realistic and dimensional. Then I start adding the seeds and this is a combination of dashes in an even darker red and a yellow and you don't have to do this for every single seed, you just want to create the illusion of seeds overall so some on the side and some on top looks good. And here I'm just going in with some deeper red and adding some final touches. As you may know, gouache dries lighter, at least darker colours dry lighter, so sometimes it's not till the end that you realise, oh, this needs a bit more intensity, so that's what I'm doing here.
Then I go back to the stalk and I begin to add my layers of paint, different greens, darker greens, and it was kind of messy. I didn't really do any definition on these leaves until the very end when I start kind of outlining them in white gouache and giving them some shape. So there wasn't really a rhyme or reason as to how I did this, but essentially I just did lots of different layers of green, uh, different shades of green, and having that contrast between the light and the dark green as well to give that depth. And then I added some final touches, just redefining the shape of the strawberry, adding a bit more red, and it's very different to the strawberries I've done with markers. It's a different look, a different approach, a different style. I should try doing these in different mediums for sure, but there's just something so satisfying about strawberries. Okay, so this final illustration is perfect for when you want to practice with gouache, practice that layering effect, achieving depth, but you don't really want to spend too much time and you don't want to draw anything in too much detail. And the fun thing is that you can use the colours that you like and kind of paint different bushes and flowers. You can make the flowers the colours you want and you can make the bush have different shaped leaves as well, but essentially the principle of layering and achieving depth is going to be the same. So essentially the colours I used for this illustration were a dark blue for the shadows and then just different shades of green going from dark to light and then two shades of pink. So I start by laying down the dark blue for the shadow and I'm using a dabbing motion for this bush and I'm putting this in random places where I want the shadowy leaves to poke through. Then once that's dry, I begin my layering process starting with the darker screen and dabbing that on, allowing for the blue underneath to poke through. Then I go to my next screen, which is slightly lighter, and I dab that on where the light is hitting the bush, making the leaves a bit lighter. And I realise I want to darken the shadows a bit more now, as I can see that the dark blue dried a bit light, so I'm going to go in and add more shadow. And then with the pink, I begin to add the flowers and I'm also mixing in the dark pink while the paint is wet so that they can kind of blend together. This is a fun illustration to do because it's quick but it helps you practice some gouache techniques and you can make the bush different shapes and colours and also use this technique for painting bushes in your landscapes as well. I hope this was fun to follow along and if you did paint any of these please feel free to tag me, I love seeing your art and have a great day, I'll see you in my next video, bye!